Max, what does matter? Do I lie? What? You mean anything that takes up space and has a mass? Yes. Now, what's the stages of matter? Solid, liquid, and gas. Yep. What's the composition of matter? What? What? You know, substances and mixtures, chemical properties and physical properties. Don't you remember chapter 15? I, uh, I, uh, I forgot about that stuff. Which chapter? No, no, just, just, just start with, like, substances. A substance is a type of matter with a fixed composition, like elements and compounds. Uh, yeah, elements, as in like a substance made of atoms that are all alike. Yeah, yeah, th those like uh, copper, titanium, helium, and like, of course, compounds just like two mixed together. So, yeah, pretty much. A compound is a substance in which atoms of two or more elements are chemically combined in a fixed proportion, like salt. What? No, I thought I thought that like chemically, like I thought they just like kind of mashed together, like, bam get to like a new mixture or something. Well, a mixture is a matter composed of two or more substances that can be separated by physical means. I'll get into that difference about physical and chemical later. Mainly there's heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. Well, what's the difference? Well, an example of a heterogeneous mixture is salad dressing since it is a mixture in which different materials remain distinct, like the noticeable herbs in the oil. There's also suspensions and colloids. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture with liquid and solid particles that settle, like a chocolate. What's a colloid? A colloid is a heterogeneous mixture that the liquid and solid particles that actually never settle, like the milk we have in our drink that's made of proteins and fats, stuff like that. Water. I am definitely allergic to milk. <laughs> okay, maybe not, maybe not. Still, I should go to the hospital. A way to test if something is a colloid is a Tyndall effect to see the scattering of a light beam as it's passed through a colloid. The one on the left is a plain water, and the one on the right is a colloid. Interesting. So I guess that homogeneous is the opposite of heterogeneous, as homogeneous mixture is one that remains constantly and uniformly mixed and has particles so small you can't even see it with a microscope. Yeah, basically a solution. But what about property changes? Like physical and chemical? Don't they just like change? Well, yeah, a physical property can be observed without changing the identity of the material. A chemical property can be observed when one or more substances are formed. What? Well, let's start with the physical property. A physical property can be the appearance of an object, like color, shape, and size. It can also be behavior like malleability or sinking slash floating. If it changes in size, shape, or state of matter in which the identity remains the same, it's a physical change. But well, you know, ice melting into water is an obvious one. I get that, but just that chemical property is just like the ability to change into another substance. How would you do that? Through a chemical change, a substance usually has to react with another, like rusting or bubbling. Though according to the law of conservation of mass, nothing is created nor destroyed, rather particles are rearranged. As the mass of the reactant equals the mass of the product, nothing is lost. Yeah, so an example of change is weathering. As rocks split from water that's slipping through the cracks and freezing, thus expanding, would be a physical change. And acid rain returning limestone a different color would be a reaction being a chemical change. Or well, paper is a good example because you can crush it and it's still paper. Or you can burn it and then it turns into smoke and ash. I'm done.
Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you should have done it. You stupid. What's nine plus ten? Twenty-one. You stupid. <laughs> nine plus ten.